This episode is about how to sort out your inner dialogue and explore the many parts of yourself so you can feel clarity, heal the wounded parts of you, know what part of yourself is talking or engaged in various moments, lead yourself with intention, and love and embrace all of yourself. Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Embody Podcast, a show about remembering and embodying your true nature inner wisdom, embodied healing, and self-love. My name is Candace Wu, and I'm a holistic healing facilitator, intuitive coach, and artist sharing my personal journey of vulnerability, offering meditations and guided healing support, and having co-creative conversations with healers and wellness practitioners from all over the world. There is no sponsorship message today, but I do want to share a new dream class that I created, which is on Skillshare. This is one of my passions is to explore dreams. I love, love dream work. And speaking about parts work today is actually uh, really connected with dream work because in a dream, it's as if every part of the dream is you. And we can see the different parts of the dream as parts of yourself revealing to you the parts of yourself. And so I created a dream class on how to remember your dreams, the basics about how to prepare yourself, create intentions around it, and the tools you'll need, as well as the key factor to remembering your dream when you wake up. This is the first class in a series of many that will dive into the juicy parts of dream work, which is embodying the energy and the gifts and wisdom that a dream brings you so that you can bring that into your life and feel even more whole. You can find this first class that's about 35 minutes long on Skillshare at CandiceWu.com slash dream class one, the number one. Right now, this class is offered for free. I'd love for you to just get a taste of it. And please leave me a review and share your feedback about what you thought about the class. And uh, that helps to also share that work with other people who are looking for a class about remembering their dreams. If you sign up through the link that I'm sharing with you today, CandiceWu.com slash dream class one, you can also get two months free of the premium subscription I think that after two months, it's about $10 to access a a wide variety of classes and um, offerings that are on Skillshare. So hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's great to have you here today. It is December 24th for many of you. It's a holiday and perhaps you're with family or friends, perhaps you're off on your own. Whatever is happening with you, I know that holidays can bring up a lot inside Right now I'm in Germany spending some time with my partner's family and him, and it is interesting. I haven't been home to Michigan with my family for the holiday time in maybe three or four years. It's been some time. I've spent a lot of my Christmas times with my family in Hong Kong, especially since my grandma was near the end of her life, and last year she passed away, so uh, it's a bit of a shift for me here to be in Germany. How have you all been feeling as the holidays are here, as the new year starts to come around the corner? For me, I've been having some interesting experiences on the surface. Emotionally, I'm I'm just very um, grounded and calm, almost blank, almost boring. And then I'll go to sleep and have these marvelous dreams. And just my dream life is like wild. And it feels like a lot of the inner stuff that I've been working on for the last 12 years, maybe 10 years at least, has, uh, is just clearing out and making its way through. And my waking life is, is just like calm as can be. However, having said that, this morning I did wake up with a bit of an experience, which is not uncommon in the last couple of weeks where I'll just wake up with this vague feeling of fear. And if I take myself a little bit seriously, which what I mean is just to slow down with myself and notice what that is and not just dismiss it, not just pretend it's not happening. Uh, Well, if I do 
and sometimes I do. It just continues much longer. But if I slow down with it, then I can find out a lot more about myself and heal something that's trying to make its way to the surface. And that's really what I experience often when it, when we are having emotions that are coming up that don't seem to totally feel in proportion to what's going on in our current life or what's happening as we know it consciously. It seems that something in us is making its way to the top so we can heal and release it. It is as if we have even more capacity in ourselves to look at something that wants to heal, something that wants to show us another piece of ourselves. So moving right into the parts work and dialoguing with the many parts of ourselves, I want to share with you what I experienced this morning. This is like fresh off the press. Not that my life is <laughs> like broadcast worthy, but apparently it is now on this show. Um, but I want to just share this as an example of how you might use parts work if you're not already or to just give you some more to boost what you're already doing. Um, when I woke up this morning, I felt this feeling of a little bit of dread, a bit of fear, and I thought, okay, well, I can easily dismiss this, but let me just feel into it. So as I felt into it and felt the emotion of it, felt into the sensation in my body and just asked out loud, who's talking? Who is feeling this fear in me? And when I did, I just let my imagination open up, let my awareness open, my heart open. And what showed up was a teenage part of me it was between the ages of 14 and actually 21. Uh, so a little bit older than teenage as well. And I just sat with this part of me and wondered, what is, what is scary? And it just immediately clicked. And I think the many years of me doing work with parts of myself and younger parts, the inner child, all of that's really helped me to be able to just feel into what's going on pretty quickly. Um, so if you're not there, don't feel bad. It just, it takes some time. It, this all didn't really quite make sense for me for many years. I think in the beginning when I was working with an EMDR therapist and doing parts work for a couple of years, it still felt hard to navigate. I didn't really know what I was doing or where to go next, but now it feels like second nature. It's how I take care of myself. It's how I love myself and relate to these many different parts of me, past, present, and future. So I'm talking to my teenage self and witnessing how she did life so alone in a lot of ways. I had many friends growing up. I had good friends in high school and college, but as for the big decisions in life, I felt like I was doing it all by myself. My parents were immigrants, and so they didn't really have that much knowledge to navigate the American world of universities and career choices. My dad was an engineer, and he had gone to U of M, University of Michigan, but he was very busy in his work, and he just didn't really know how to mentor me in, in these spaces. So I made a lot of career and life choices on my own. And well, looking back, there were a few mentors here and there, but I really needed someone close to me. So the feeling was that it was quite scary to do this all by myself. And as I looked at all the decisions I made, I felt quite proud of myself. I felt like I made those decisions and I, I did okay. So that was very healing, feeling into that side of things, what I had done right and what I'd stepped into, even though I didn't have what I needed. And looking back, I remember not feeling fear at all. I just did it. I just plowed through. And that's the kind of plowing through, overriding, moving forward that is part of my survival mode where I just keep going and I don't feel the fear because it's actually not safe to feel the fear. So it makes a lot of sense to me that I'm feeling that fear right now because in the past I couldn't feel it. 
and where in other situations prior to having done so much healing work, I might have identified with that fear and just applied it to my now situation and kind of gotten in a slump of depression, which is very reminiscent of the past, 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 past. This experience of just pinpointing who's talking and giving that part of myself what it needs, this part of me needed to feel like she wasn't alone anymore. So I let her know that I was always going to be there for her and that she's no longer alone. And I being an older, wiser, more resourced part of myself, the future self, the future Candace. And that felt quite comforting to this part of me as I imagined and connected with my inner teenager. And she just needed to have that update and to be reminded of all the ways that she did it right and to feel through the fear and the aloneness and to be reminded that that's not exactly the way it is now. So the fear passed and a lot of grief moved through. It's almost all the way through, but... At this point, it doesn't require much tending to. It's just making its way through my body. And I can feel things in my body kind of recalibrating. There was a big shift of sensation in my body, heat, warmth. And now there's just a more open space. I feel clearer. I feel like my breath is deeper again. And there are just some different movements happening inside energetically. So what I'm describing to you is the process of connecting with some vague fear I had, asking myself, who is this? Tuning into the part of me that needs something, giving myself what this part needs, and building that relationship even further with my younger self. And then the physical and energetic emotional changes that happen as a part of the healing process and coming out on that other side, feeling even more grounded in myself and knowing myself even more. It's quite a gift to be able to honor a younger part of myself that didn't get what she needed and to know that pain that I experienced in a fuller and deeper way just gives me so much more depth to myself now. So let's dive into parts work and explore this together. Parts work comes from and connects with, as well as overlaps with, many different traditions. It can be used in so many different ways. There's IFS, which is Internal Family Systems, which is looking at who is this internal, inner family that is engaging with one another. What are the many different parts of me that create this inside family that is my psyche. There's also voice dialogue, which has resonated with me very much. And it's similar to IFS, where we're looking at what are the parts of me, which part of me is speaking or leading the way, and how do I become aware of these parts and their dynamics so that I'm so aware that I can choose and be intentional about which part of me is leading. Other people call it parts work, very basically, or soul work and working with pieces of the soul. Shamanism works with that in particular. And whatever it is called, the method of working with it might be a little bit different or the different uh, clinician or healer working with it has a different spin on it. And the way that I like to work with it is to bring in the body, of course, the embodiment piece of how is it to experience this part of yourself, whether you're stepping into that one part or you're communicating with that one part, what's the felt sense, how are the emotions, what's happening, what wants to happen in the body, how is the body holding this experience, and how can we bring healing, what's needed. So it's really about opening the heart and the body and allowing the healing to come from a heart space, from a place of love and basic emotional needs, which is what I find a lot of our inner wounds need. 
we have many different parts of ourselves that are talking and coming into play at different times. These are subpersonalities, part of our subconscious. Some are more in our awareness than other parts. And it's not that we have dissociative identity disorder or some people in the past might have called it multiple personality. It doesn't signify that you have a disorder or pathology if you are noticing the many parts of you. It's actually an incredible thing that can help you find clarity about yourself and also bring healing to the parts of you that may have gotten stuck in time or stuck in a certain place of development or soul parts that have gotten stuck in different lives. It's quite a resource to notice that my inner critic is really strong and it just comes online when, whenever I'm approaching a new situation or if I'm going to have a fun experience, my inner critic tells me that I shouldn't and how I'm such a bad person for even wanting that. So it's helpful for us to notice what ways we're talking to ourselves and very specifically what part of ourself is doing that talking. Because then as we get to know that one part of us, that voice that comes in every time this or that happens, then we can bring some healing to that one part. Because it's certainly not all of you. To be able to notice the complexities of who we are, the parts of ourselves that are coming in, the parts of ourselves that get hidden or don't get a chance to voice or speak up or stand up, the many different emotions that we may have at one time, all of that shows the complexity and the beauty of us as human and also is incredibly empowering because you're not just one thing at one time. You're many things, and it gives that awareness so that you can choose who you want to be and heal the parts of you and embrace more of yourself. You can understand that your inner critic was some part of you that had to learn how to be really harsh because someone else on the outside was harsh or it was protecting you in a certain way. And so instead of just trying to kill that voice inside, trying to change the words that you say to yourself, which is sometimes helpful, but if it's not, what do you do? And this is one solution. If it's not helpful to just change the words, then let's look at why those words are so strongly there. So when we have parts of ourselves that are extremely rigid or strongly there and very, I don't know, perhaps causing sabotage or pain inside, tension, then that might be a clue to us that there's been some wounding that this part of us, that who we are inside, wants us to look at so we can heal. So if you've seen the movie Inside Out, uh, that's sort of a primer to the inner world. I feel that our inner world is much more complex than just defining it by different emotions. In Inside Out, there was a girl and you could see her inner parts working. And those inner parts included sadness, joy, anger, etc. And what I find is more that these different parts of ourselves all have a variety of emotions. Some may feel more anxious than others, or we may track down and get to know a certain part of ourselves by the fact that the fear comes up. And so what is what is a part of us that has that fear? So it's not just defined by emotions to delineate our inner parts. The personality of each of our parts can elicit a variety of emotions. So think about a situation where you seem to get triggered in the same way or the same thing repeats itself and you get reactive and somehow the same you you deal with it the same way or you react in the same way. That part of you may be a certain aspect of your inner self and if we explore what that part of you desires what the agenda of this part of you is, what the wounds are, how they're feeling right now, what they need. We can really open up a whole world of a part of you that can be reclaimed and embraced and um, healed. 
if it's needing healing or incorporated into your daily life, if that's empowering or maybe another part of you can support this part of you that's hurting. So for me, one of the easiest ways to work with my inner parts is to see what age this part of me is. And first of all, is it me or is it someone else, an energy of someone else or the voice of someone else? If it is me and it has a a distinct age or a sense of an age, just checking to see if there's some impression of how old or young this part is can really give a lot of information. As I was talking about my teenage self, that teenage self is extremely different from my two-year-old self who needs a lot more regulation, support, love. And a two-year-old self developmentally is going through a completely different experience. Well, I guess that's arguable (laughs) than a teenager. But if you know anything about developmental psychology or child development, we know that two-year-olds want to assert themselves in a very strong way. They want to know yes and no. They want to be able to speak and move and feel free, but also they want what they want when they want it and can feel very upset if they're not getting what they want and what they need. And so I guess that isn't very different from teenagers, but it comes with a different flavor. And it comes from a different developmental place because if that two-year-old gets supported in a way that's empathetic, attuned, loving, yet clear in terms of boundaries, then my teenage self might have been way better off. So all this to say that the different inner child parts of us might have a different set of experiences given what age we are and what happened around that age, what life was like at that time and what we needed and didn't get or what we experienced, and not just the challenging things but the joyful things. What were the good things in life at each time period? Other inner parts might be past life parts our inner critic, the part of us that just gets so mean to ourselves, as I mentioned earlier, the protector, the part of us that wants to protect us from any harm, whether that's emotional, spiritual, or physical, our dominant or submissive parts, the wise parts of us, the inner divine or inner sage, higher self, the parts of us that are like a teacher or coach, if that's a part of you that shows up in your life. If you have a career and you have different skills that you're using in that career, perhaps that's a part of yourself that comes through, the leader in you. Also, there's a part of us that is our mother or is our father or some other ancestor or friend that we experience the energy of this person through us and we have an aspect of ourselves that is like that person or can tune into the energy of that person yet that aspect is part of us as well so when we say that everyone is a mirror of ourselves this really sheds light on how that is exactly so if we're talking to the mother in you your specifically or your own mother if you close your eyes and picture your mother and talk to her, there may be an experience of how she might respond to you, talk to you, feel towards you, and how you might feel towards her. And in a lot of ways, we work with family constellations in that way by visualizing, but we can also tune into our ideal parents, our ideal father, our ideal um, ancestry in terms of the soul of them, the love in them, or some part of a person that you'd really like to experience to support you. Sometimes when I work with a part of me, it turns out to be that it feels like it's a blob of energy or it's uh, some creature of some sort or, or an animal. So it's helpful to be completely curious and open about what a certain part of you may look like or be like so that you can learn more about it and see how to interact with it, how it can be best incorporated and integrated into your psyche. We can't exactly get rid of parts of us, 
sometimes parts are ready to leave or release. And that usually is best done without uh, force or resistance. But in really truly seeing what that part needs to be released or if it's ready to go, if there's anything it needs before it goes, so that it's a true release and not just a pushing away of an aspect of yourself. And what I find is that when we push a part of ourselves down or away, that part can feel abandoned. And if you've ever felt abandoned in your life, it could be a repeat. Instead of you experiencing the abandonment from outside, it's that it then becomes an inner abandonment of an aspect of yourself that really wants to be seen, honored, and appreciated. And a lot of times we do abandon younger parts of ourselves that we had to put aside in order to survive, where we weren't able to feel through a certain pain or fear or something that happened in the past and pushed that part down or pushed that energy down maybe and we're used to that so we can still leave some of our inner parts abandoned or dismissed or berating them or or the plethora of ways that we were treated when we were younger so you can see how the outer world and the inner world all of that is an iteration or repetition or fractal of the same way of being that can repeat in your life, all of it stemming to a belief set that you might have that perhaps you came in with or picked up along the way. And these parts of ourselves usually want the best for us. When we ask them what they desire for us, it's usually in some way for us to succeed, to be protected, to be okay, to be safe we get down to and distill to the very basic of what the purpose of how they're behaving is. So as I said, each part of ourselves has an agenda. It has perhaps a sense of age or timeliness. It has a whole set of knowledge, perhaps even a physiology. So if we tune into your um, inner critic, maybe that part is very tense. If we tune into your five-year-old self, maybe that part is very free and joyful, or perhaps it's curled up in a ball and needing a lot of attention. And so the body can carry the shape of that energy if we tune specifically to one part. So what's just so fun to do is explore the inner workings of how all of these different parts of you engage. How do they talk to one another? Different parts might communicate differently with other parts and differently with other parts. Do some parts push another part down or are some parts te like teammates and work together? They're partners in crime or they really work together while they push out another part of you. Is there a part of you that protects your younger self or a part of you that um, chimes in when your inner critic chimes in. So a lot of times our inner critic can connect up with our achiever, the part of us that really wants to achieve a lot and do well and perhaps is driven by feeling not enough. And when that part comes online, maybe the inner critic gets a little mean about things when things are not going right or when you're trying something for the first time or performing something, etc. Maybe the achiever also connects up with the part of you that pushes and drives you forward and does it like white knuckling it. And so perhaps those three inner critic, achiever and pusher really um, become this challenging force inside. And all the while, the other parts of you are feeling berated and hurt and plowed over. So how is everyone inside? How is the whole team doing? And who's included and who's not? And when I've experienced in myself or with my clients that every part of the system is acknowledged in some way or has its place, just like in family constellations, 
there's a sense of peace. Everyone can be supported and utilized in a way that is helpful to the whole being. And that's similar in any team. If you think about a work team, we want everyone to feel that they're valued, supported, included, and an important part of things, no matter what their role is, whether that's down to the person cleaning the bathrooms, to the head person um, that is the leader of the team. So our inner world is similar. We want every part of us to feel engaged in the right ways and in the right times and loved and having their place. So a couple of weeks ago, I had the feeling life is so hard. Like I just woke up in the morning feeling like I just can't do life. I just don't know. And um, this is not an unfamiliar feeling to me. I've worked with this feeling a lot and it's connected up with many of my younger parts, the parts of me that um, did have a really hard time in younger life where I had to f- experience a lot of things that were uncomfortable, traumatic, as well as deal with all the emotions by myself. And made, mainly the way to deal with it was to numb it out because it was way too overwhelming. Uh, But I hadn't had this feeling in a while that life is so hard. Uh, And at different times, if I'm nervous about something, it can trigger that feeling that life is so hard. But it really is just a a bit of nerves around something that I'm um, experiencing or, or approaching. But with this particular feeling, again, I felt like, okay, let's just look at what what is this? And as I did... It connected up with not just my younger self, but also a younger part of my grandpa. My paternal grandpa was adopted when he was around five years old. And the story that, as I'd heard it from one person in my family, was that he was given away for money. And this is, of course, not talked about in my family. And so because it was probably such a painful and maybe shameful experience, Well, later I found out that my great-grandmother had passed away, his mother, and that my great-grandfather had probably been overwhelmed, didn't know what to do, um, and perhaps didn't have enough money. I don't know what happened to my grandpa's siblings, but my grandpa was given to someone else in exchange for money. And then eventually my great-grandma that I knew in my life, that was the adopted great-grandma, was the one that took him in. So as I opened up the feeling of life is so hard and felt into it, I also asked myself, what's the context for this? Is this me? Is this my younger self? And partially it felt like yes, and partially felt like "Mm, it's not all mine. And that's exactly right because what came up was the energy of my grandpa, the feelings that he couldn't hold, that life is so hard, terrifying, dreadful perhaps, scary and upsetting, all of those feelings, as well as of grief and loss and pain, I don't think he could very much hold for himself, given all that happened and how I'm holding it now. And as I imagined my grandpa in that experience and just felt into some compassion for what he may have experienced, it was releasing in me and Not only that my younger self didn't have to hold the pain of my grandpa and my great-grandparents, but also the repeated feelings in me that life is so hard, the same feelings that I went through when I was younger. So I want to talk briefly about how we can use heart's work in relationships. It's extremely helpful when you're triggered in an intimate relationship or a family relationship, when there's an upset between you or a conflict It's really helpful for me, at least, to be able to notice what part of me got triggered and perhaps open up what part of the other person got triggered. And if they can speak the same language, then even better because it's like, oh, yeah, my six-year-old self is talking to your 15-year-old self. Hmm. I don't think we're going to solve many problems here this way. And no wonder we're both reactive and reactive in our specific ways. Or maybe someone's younger self 
child self is talking to my child self who turned into a parent early on and knows how to be a mother, which is an interesting paradox being both child and mother. But that's a part that gets activated in me sometimes when I'm in relationship. If someone else is really needing someone and wanting someone to guide their way, sometimes that part of me, the younger part that wants to please them so that I can get love, turns into a motherly figure to take care of the other person so that I can get what I need and the other person can get what they need. And so I don't really like to lead from these parts. I don't really like to be in an intimate relationship with those parts of me guiding the way and interacting the most. It's not really fun to be someone's mother uh, when you're not. So you might take a little look at your own relationships and where there's some conflict or where there's any place where you get activated or upset or anxious or reactive and check out what part of you is having that response. And then if you slow it down even more, what part of you or what parts of you come online afterwards? A lot of times a younger part of us gets activated, especially in relationship or especially in experiences where there's authority in relationship, like a boss or supervisor, or when we're in groups. And if our child part gets activated, then perhaps another part of us comes online to protect that part from having to be felt. So if the child part gets activated with some hurt, maybe it happens so quickly that the critic in us, the inner critic, comes and says, nope, you can't feel that. We don't have feelings like that. Um, you're not allowed to feel that. And maybe not quite so literally, but swoops in and does something to distract or is mean to you so that you can move forward or beats you up a little and says, you just have to plow through or whatever it is. And then maybe another part says, oh, well, maybe we don't have to be so hard on ourselves. And all of these different voices start to tangle up. One easy way to spot different parts of you getting conflicted or having a conversation is when you are making a decision that you're not so sure about, that you have some ambivalence about, and there are two sides to the story or many things to consider, pros and cons, and yet one part of you really wants this and another part of you says, no, I don't think so because X, Y, and Z. And then you kind of just go back and forth in your head and it all gets mixed up and you can't really make a decision because both the pros and the cons and the pros from either side of the story seem worthy. And where do you go from here? And sometimes it's just so overwhelming that perhaps our nervous system just shuts down a bit and we get paralyzed. We don't know how to make that choice. And so maybe we don't make a choice or we just get stuck in that internal chatter an argument back and forth and back and forth and back and forth considering what we should do. Should we do this? Should we not? We shouldn't. Yes, we should. Yes, we should. No, we shouldn't. And it just goes back and forth, back and forth. Well, I found that if you sort out those voices, well, who's the one saying that it's a good idea and why? And we interview them a bit, get to know their full story, what the, that part's thoughts are, and all the reasons why they think it's a good or a bad idea, and hear this side out. In fact, you can even sit in two chairs or three chairs, however many parts you're sensing, and sit in one chair and talk from that part, then move to another, and have a rebuttal, etc., and just duke it out, but hear each part out. That's called the empty chair technique, actually, and that's something that's often done in gestalt therapy or other psychodynamic therapies even. And uh, that's where parts work overlaps. We can see that many traditions are using this in a lot of different ways. The really fun thing to do if you do set out two chairs for two different parts of you that are arguing back and forth is that when you sit in one side and let that side have its say, 
don't just talk, but allow it to come from within, allow it to come from the feeling of it, and feel the depth of what's going on in your body. Notice how the body is held. Notice if there's an emotion or a way the body feels or has sensation in some place, or maybe there's tension in one area or a couple. Just see what it is to be like in that in the body from this one part, which is how I like to use voice dialogue. When we're dialoguing with a part, I often talk to that part of my clients. So I ask, can I speak to the inner protector in you? And I ask them to move to a different place in the room. And however that part wants to show up is quite interesting. Maybe they're on the ground lying down and eyes closed, which for a protector, that can be a challenging way to protect someone. And maybe that person feels very vulnerable and unprotected in themselves, unsafe. I've seen a protector show up standing and hovering over another part with fists at their hips and elbows sticking out like like kind of with this strong pose and looking down on that other part with some disgust or um, disdain. So we can see from our physiology when a part shows up or when we step into a part what the dynamic is going on inside and it really illuminates this inner dynamic so that you can have more awareness. And what I find is the more awareness we have about the different parts of us and how they're interacting, the more we just acknowledge it, see it, feel it, honor it, honor where it came from or how this pattern started and be gentle with it, the more that we have distance from it, we're able to have flexibility then because we see more And we're not so limited by that part because we have more awareness. It's released some of its hold, its power and grip on us. And we have a new flexibility to shift into a different part of us because we see, we see more, we see how we've been. And when that happens, when that awareness happens, it just gradually loses its rigidity and we de-identify even more or some healing happens. So the most powerful thing that's happened with some of this work is that people feel, wow, I understand myself and now I can choose with more intention what part of myself I want to be. And I know how to take care of these other parts of me and I don't have to depend on my parents the way I used to. I can give love to my inner child or I can heal the parts of me that have been wounded from a past relationship, even though that relationship has long ended. So it's a beautiful thing. I love it. It's so much fun. And for especially people who want to analyze everything and want to talk everything through, this moving into a different place and speaking from that voice or sitting and picturing and visualizing what part is talking and connecting with that part as if it's a separate part. That has been incredibly helpful to build not only awareness, but also to help shift and heal the nervous system so that there's a new baseline of relaxation and safety inside. We can find parts of ourselves that have been hidden away abandoned, shut down, or even killed. And so those parts, when they come back alive, can make us feel even fuller. We can find parts of ourselves that are incredibly joyful and are essential to who we are. And when those parts are shut up or abandoned, we don't feel like ourselves. We feel quite stifled or lost. We use that word a lot. I feel lost. And perhaps that's a part of you that's lost. Who's lost? What part of you is lost? And as I spoke about my story with my great grandparents and my grandpa, the, holding the energy of my grandpa, 
a lot of times it can be a part of ourselves that has felt lost or whatever feeling we're feeling, but it also can link up with someone in our ancestry whose story was never told, whose story was lost, or whose life was lost. And it can even connect up with past life. If that's a part of your understanding or resonates with you, then it might be helpful to feel into, is this part of a past life? Or is it part of this life? What part of me is this? So a fun activity that you can do with yourself is to just take any scenario that you notice you have been activated or reactive and to start to slow it down. Picture the whole conversation again or the uh, interaction and just see what part of me is turned on there? What part of me was reacting? And you can even play it all out again and notice how it feels in your body and start to ask with gentleness and with a sort of listening heart space rather than an analyzing space. We don't want to keep it all in the head and the mind. We want to bring it down to an experiential place where it involves the whole body. Because that's where the transformation happens. That's where the depth of the emotion can be felt and released. And that's where things can really shift inside. So asking yourself out of a scenario, who was that or what parts were that? And you can name them anything you want to. I used certain names during this, this podcast and in IFS and voice dialogue there are different titles for more common parts like our inner critic or protector, the inner child, our wounded child, the magical child, our dominant part. You might use archetypes like warrior. You might have your own name for parts. I love that because it gives you ownership of exactly what that part wants to be called, if it wants to be called anything. And recognizing that inner part of you is very unique to you. It is like your own fingerprint. So nobody else can tell you exactly what that part is. But sometimes it is quite helpful to hear someone else say, well, that part sounds like it's your inner critic. And when we're so used to just all these different voices in our mind, these thoughts happening, it can feel really cluttered. And if someone else that gets to know you or comes in with this awareness of parts, they can say, oh, that part sounds like a different part. It doesn't have the same flavor or tone as that anxious part of you that was just speaking. This part's crying. What, what part is that? It sounds different from the part that has a stern voice. And then you can take that in and go, oh, right. That's, that feels that that's totally a different part. And another fun thing you can do with this is you can map out your inner self. I love taking post-it notes and just taking one part of yourself to a post-it note. So writing down like my five-year-old self because a lot happened when I was five. And that part seems to be really stuck in time or wants a lot of support or shows up a lot. And also carries my joys. Okay, put one post-it note as my five-year-old self and then another as um, the artist in me. And just start to name parts of yourself that seem to come into your life. And then name parts of yourself that you want to lead more often. Energies that you'd like to hold and be in your life like your higher self or your inner wisdom, your inner being, the essence of you, the dancer in you, the lover, the romantic. What parts of you do you want to show up more often? And write those down on the post-it too. And as you lay them out on like a giant piece of paper or a wall, I love using the wall, or even a desk, then you can start to just intuitively place them how they relate to each other. As I said, maybe the inner critic and the achiever part of you are comrades and they just 
work together all the time. They're inseparable and they're super far away from the younger self or maybe the younger self hides behind them. Hmm. And so where are all these parts, if you could give them a visual location, map them out dimensionally, even like if there are layers or if they're just in different parts of this space, give them a visual so that you can start to see the inner workings of yourself. And to go farther than that, if you start to ask yourself, oh, what would the coach say to my younger self? Or what if my younger self stood over here instead next to that wise inner sage? And how would that feel? So getting some flexibility in the system so that you can use all the resources you have so that you can use the many parts of you to support other parts of you that need support. This is how we look at or we understand the idea that we have everything within us that we need to heal and that we have all the power within us. It's just about accessing all these parts of us at the right time. You might ask yourself, what part of me do I want to show up in my relationship with my partner or with my boss or with my mother? You might even map out the parts of you that are your grandmother, like the grandmother in me. And maybe that relates to your specific grandmother because your grandmother reminds you of a pure love or generosity or something. And that can be an aspect of yourself that you start to cultivate. So we have that inner reflection of the outer people in our life that can give us a feeling sense, an energy of a part of ourselves. You can also design new parts. If you didn't have a certain type of parent that you really needed when you were younger, maybe you were a sensitive person and And you needed someone who was completely attuned and present to that. And so you can design an ideal parent and create this inner parent that can love your younger self. Or maybe that is your adult self already. So we can play with this in so many ways. And as I said, it's really helpful to do this with somebody that can support you in understanding the different parts of you, can ask curious questions and give you new curiosity and new awareness and also bring in gentleness, tenderness, and love to the mix so that you can begin to love all the parts of you. Since there's so much you can do with this, in the following days, I'm going to share two healing experientials, one with dialoguing with a part of yourself by sensing into them, visualizing that part, talking with that part, and learning more about that part, that question of who's talking and what is their agenda? What do they need? So perhaps we can bring healing to this part or tap into some wisdom that's already waiting for you to unleash and unlock. And that would be a dialoguing from who you are now, sensing into imagining another part of you. And then The second one is going to be fun, really interesting, because I'm going to dialogue with a part of you. So I'll ask you in this experience to step into a different part of you, and I'll talk to you as if we're right here together. But of course, we're not. And so you'll just be responding from your side of things when you listen. And I'll just invite you to experience this part, talk to me from this part, and then step back into your whole self. So if you've done some family constellations work with me or through the podcast, this might already sound quite familiar. And it is. It's not really all that different because we have access to the energy and the knowledge of different parts of ourselves as well as different parts of others, it is it is one and the same. It is our intuitive sense and what comes through us and allowing what's already there to be seen, felt, and understood. 
And I also hope to be doing a couple more of these experientials around parts. So look out for those in the months to come, um, starting out with these two. So we're at the end here. It's cold and snowy here where I am in Germany, and I'm just ready to cuddle up into a blanket and have some tea, do a little bit of rest and uh, hibernate. That's kind of what I've been wanting to do. As I said, a lot of crazy dreams are happening and so much is coming to the surface to heal, even though I did say uh, in the beginning of the podcast that not much is happening on the surface. Well, I think it was just turning and now it's really coming through um, to the surface because this morning I woke up to finish the second half of this podcast and a lot of grief was moving through from what I had started to tell you about yesterday um, at the beginning of this podcast. So uh, as we conclude this podcast, let's just take a moment together and feel your being, feel your presence here along with me. Just take a couple of breaths. Notice where you are. We don't often take the time to do that, to just notice our surroundings and to take pleasure in what we're seeing around us or to close our eyes and feel inward. And just notice your own body here. Notice your breath, that you're alive right now. The most simple thing. And just thank yourself. Thank yourself for listening in today and developing yourself, having fun with yourself, healing, loving yourself. And as we go today, just want to thank you for being here. It's really lovely to hear from you when you email me and share with me what's going on for you. I love hearing from people I already know and connect with or who are my clients. And also I love hearing from new people. It's just delightful to hear or to receive a message from someone I don't even know who says, I've been listening to your podcast and found these things helpful or wasn't so sure about what you said there. What do you mean? Feel free to do that. Feel free to share or ask questions and to give me any ideas about what you want to hear about coming up. Um, we have just a short time until the new year. Next week, I'll be talking about some of my end of the year thoughts and how I conclude the year out, cycle of life and death, allying with death. I love that. So happy holidays if you're celebrating and stay warm out there if it's cold where you are. And if you're listening in and you want to stay connected with me, uh, to listen to more podcasts, healing experientials, or other offerings that I have, check out my website at candicewoo.com slash embody where you can sign up for the newsletter that'll inform you of all these things. You can also connect in on Facebook, search Embody Community, and you'll find us. That's where I post five to 10 minute videos around self-love, um, tips, and meditations. and. As I mentioned, the dream course earlier, check that out on Skillshare. You can find it at candicewoo.com slash dreamclass1, the number one. Thanks again, and see you all next week on the Embody Podcast. Mm-hmm.